What is going on, tuners? Welcome back to the garage, and tomorrow is the day where we take the Silverado down to get the yearly emissions check. And I know if you are anything like me, dealing with emissions on a modified vehicle can be a huge pain in the ass. I'm here to tell you there's a couple things that we can do to make the process go a little bit smoother and to make sure that we don't have any hiccups. So stick around. <music> Welcome back to the garage, everybody, and I want to thank all the new subscribers. We've had a gang load of new people showing up over here. It's good to see new faces, new questions, and new interaction. Had a good turnout on last Thursday's live stream. We broke 70. Awesome. Thank you guys for your support, as always. Make sure and check out the links down below for the Patreon and merch and decals and all that fun stuff. Of course, links over to the Amazon store where you can pick up some of the equipment that we use here at the garage if you're looking to get into tuning. That being said, today we're talking about the yearly emissions inspection. And a lot of you guys are probably in an area that requires you to go down and get an emissions inspection. Well, there's two main types of inspection. One of them is the old tried and true uh, dyno with the tailpipe sniffer. Not a lot of places are doing that anymore because the equipment cost is extraordinarily high and so there's not as many uh, shops that can participate in the emissions uh, phase. If that is the type of inspection that you are dealing with, just having a properly tuned vehicle will pass that. So just make sure to get your fuel terms or fuel trims dialed in properly. You should be good to go. But the one that most of us deal with nowadays is the OBD2 plug and check. Basically, they are looking for a couple things. One, if you have any DTCs, check engine lights, you're gonna fail right off the bat 99% of the time. They're just gonna reject you and say, hey, you can't come in here with the DTC. Even though, in the situation that we've got going on in the Super Auto right now, is there's probably two check engine lights. One of them is going to be for low idle, which is not an issue, is not a failable offense, and then the other one is going to be for a fuel sender error. Once again, not an issue, not a failable offense in an actual emissions inspection, but we will go into how to find those DTCs, disable them in the tune, that way you don't have nuisance check engine lights causing you an issue whenever it comes to doing the inspection. The other side of it's a little bit more complicated. It is the readiness test. There is between six and maybe nine checks that are ran on a vehicle based on which emission systems are uh, on the vehicle. And anytime you write a tune to the vehicle, it resets those readiness checks and you have to go through multiple drive cycles to reset them and get the okay. That's the next step of the plug-in emissions check. They will plug in, Check to see all of your readiness checks have passed, and if they have not, you have technically failed that inspection. So you can kind of glean from the information that we're gonna talk about how to fix these DTCs, what a, a potential solution is for the readiness checks. Now, technically, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you exactly what to do to go out and pass those readiness checks because there's what might be considered some uh, legality involved on that side of it, but the process is basically the same as clearing up just the regular DTCs. You may just have to do some backtracking to figure out what is withholding on those readiness checks. That part is a little bit more shrouded in mystery. I don't know if there is a one-to-one -one solution to say if you are having an issue with this readiness check. I have one in particular that sometimes gives me fits. Uh, which uh, DTCs that is tied back to though. So all of those readiness checks require a drive cycle or multiple passes on a DTC check. So all of those are tied back to standard DTCs in one way or another. Uh, so no, I'm being a little bit cryptic there, but you know, this is kind of one of those shady gray areas that you could technically be breaking the law if you were to go in to do and say, maybe disabled all of your DTCs. But let's jump into the truck. We're going to hook the scanner up, see which DTCs that we have that are current that are going to cause us an issues to get this thing to pass inspection. I know of the two that we're probably going to see, but we'll see which other ones show up. We will change the settings so those are no longer an issue for this, uh, this event, and then we will hook back up and make sure that they have cleared. 
Okay, so we got the scanner fired up here. We're gonna connect up to the vehicle, see which DTCs that we have. And here we go. So we literally have a fuel level sensor circuit low, which is a check engine light that is pending current uh, that is causing us issues. Then we've got a P2635, which we don't exactly know what it means. Uh, as you can see, a lot of the readiness checks on here are incomplete. Uh, we've got, we're good on misfiring components, but fuel system, catalyst, all this stuff has not gone through enough drive cycles since we did the throttle body swap. I've only driven it once since I did the throttle body swap, which I updated the tune there. That's why I'm talking about anytime you update and write a tune, it will reset these. You need to keep that in mind and not necessarily do this the day before your inspection like I'm doing right now. But let's go ahead and jump over. I've got the log opened up or the tune opened up. We're going to look for the P0462 underneath diagnostics, DTC. And you'll notice that there's two different things here, SES enable and error mode. SES enable is a checkbox and basically that just says that if you connect uh, or if you throw this error code, that SES enable causes the check engine light to actually appear on the dash. You can unclick that and the light won't show up, but if you pull codes, the codes will still be there. Whereas on error mode, you have the options of uh, error on first, error on second, no mill light, or no error reported. So, P0462. Okay. So, we're going to go ahead. Oh, wrong one. We'll uncheck it and we're going to do no error. Then the other one was a P2635. Pump, fuel pump flow insufficient. And that mostly is tied back to the fact that it didn't prime in time and caused a low. Uh, pressure, but that's the two. I'm going to save this and then flash it in. We'll see if those check engine lights are gone. Okay, we're connected back up. We just read the DTCs. As you can see, the one is definitely gone. The other one, there's a permanent still there that will clear on the next drive cycle. Uh, basically, permanents stick around until you get through one or two drive cycles and they will roll off so long as the error has not reoccurred. Since we have disabled that one, it will clear up on the next drive cycle though. So there you have a pretty straightforward process to make sure that these nuisance check engine lights don't cause you an issue if you're going in to get your inspection done, emissions inspection, things like that. As I said, there's some other ways that you can kind of game the system. I'm not going to go into it. You can figure it out. There's plenty of information on the forums out there. I don't condone it, but I understand if you need to do it. I don't necessarily... Uh, buy into all the emissions requirements and stuff like that. If you break down the science of it, the math behind it, the total CO2 output of vehicles across the world is 0.4% of total CO2 output. So if we literally stopped every single car on the face of the planet right now, we would only produce 0.4% less CO2, which is not even... Come on now. So... I understand where it comes from. Things have changed since the 70s. There was a reason for it back in the day, but the technology that's on these vehicles nowadays, it's a bit overkill, uh, honestly. But, I mean, I think they're wisening up, and that's why they use things like the readiness checks and the check engine light to determine whether or not the car is running properly. The car can tell its own story nowadays. But, as a tuner... You can also kind of manipulate the story that your car is allowed to tell. So that's going to wrap it up for this one. Make sure and check us out Thursday nights, 8 Eastern for the live show. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, I appreciate all the new subscribers, all the shares, all the likes. You guys are the greatest. Uh, remember, ABT, always be tuning. And as usual, thank you for stopping by the garage.